David Freiberger. And I'm Chad Reynolds. And in this video, we're going to show you how to install a distributor. Before we get started, I want to show you just a little bit of how a distributor works so that you can picture what's going to go on here in the video. If I take off our cutaway distributor cap here, you can see that there's a reluctor and a pickup inside the distributor. And as the distributor shaft turns, each one of these little teeth passes by there and triggers your electronic ignition when to send a spark. That spark goes through the rotor here, which aligns with the distributor cap where your spark plug wires go. And as you can see, the terminal on the rotor spins around to send sparks to all the eight cylinders in the engine. And of course, we're assuming you have eight cylinders as you should. I showed you how the shaft rotates inside the distributor, but you can see this one that is installed in the engine, the shaft won't turn because it is meshed with the camshaft inside the motor. But the housing will rotate independently of the shaft, and that's the setting that we need to get correct in order to align the rotor with the number one spark plug terminal, which is what you're gonna learn when we next show you how to actually install the distributor. We're gonna cover two scenarios for installing a distributor in your engine. Later on in the video, you're gonna see how you would do it if you're starting completely from scratch. But first, we're gonna show you how to install a distributor on an engine that already has a working distributor. We're doing it here at West Tech Performance Group on an engine dyno, but it's exactly the same scenario if you do it at home in your car. Before we begin, it's really advisable to know what your engine's firing order is and where the spark plug wires go on the distributor cap. You can find the location of your number one cylinder and your firing order and your direction of distributor rotation all online or in your service manual, but here's a few tips. First, if you have a distributor that has vacuum advance, point to the vacuum advance canister like this and it will tell you which way your distributor rotates. In this case, it rotates this way. So this distributor on the small block Chevy rotates clockwise, which means that all the spark plug wires go on the distributor cap in clockwise order following the firing order. Since I happen to know that this is the number one spark plug wire, which you can follow down to the number one cylinder, that means that our firing order on this small block Chevy is 18436572. Just good information to have before you start disassembling anything. Now, if you're starting with an engine that is running fine and you're just going to R&R the distributor, the things that we want to do are make sure that we mark everything so that we can get it back in the same place that it came out. We already showed you how to do that with the firing order, just so it's square in your head. But the next thing you're going to want to do is mark the relationship of the distributor housing to the engine block. And this is mostly handy if you're going to be installing the same distributor so you can get it back in the same place. If you're swapping out your stock distributor for a new MSD unit, this isn't quite as handy, but it's a good point of reference. Once you've got the relationship of the housing and the engine marked, the next thing you're gonna do is remove the distributor cap and mark the location of the rotor inside the distributor. I find it handy to use something like a straight edge, like this screwdriver, and I'm gonna mark exactly on an immovable object, such as this throttle bracket, which I'm not gonna touch during the remainder of this installation, so I know exactly where that rotor is gonna point. Now that David's got the distributor all marked up exactly where it needs to stay, I'm gonna take the distributor out. The first thing is that you need to remove the distributor hold down clamp, which holds the housing of the distributor in place while the engine's running so that the timing doesn't change from it flopping around. Um, after I do that, I can just yank this thing out, except if this was on a Ford. On a Ford, you need to be careful because the oil pump drive shaft will stick to the distributor and you could pull it out, end up dropping it, and it'll end up in there where you have to fish it out with a magnet. So just be careful so you don't have to do that. Once you have the distributor out of the engine, the main thing you want to worry about is do not crank over the motor. Don't do it with a starter, don't put a wrench on the front of it, nothing, because you're relying on everything staying in the exact same spot so you can line up these marks that you've made. So let's assume that you've come back with the same distributor that you took out and you're gonna line up the mark at the housing with the mark on the block. However, because the gear that's at the bottom of most distributors is cut helically, that means that the line for the rotor is not gonna line up perfectly to let the distributor drop straight in. You're gonna have to take the rotor and lead it a little bit ahead 
of the mark that you've made in order to have it drop in and have that gear mesh properly. For example, you see that right now, I've got the rotor perfectly lined up with my mark, but the distributor won't go in. I'm one tooth off. That means that I want to lift it up and just move one tooth back on that gear and sets right in like it was meant to be. Now I can rotate my distributor housing, align the mark right there, and I am halfway home. Once I've got the housing all lined up and the rotor pointed in exactly the right place, I can reinstall the distributor hold, hold down clamp to hold the distributor in position, making sure that it does not move anywhere. If I'm reinstalling my old distributor, I can simply put my old distributor cap back on right in place and I'm ready to go. But many of you will be installing a new distributor, which means you've got a new distributor cap to deal with, like so. And I could bet you can see the problem coming, which is how are you gonna know where all the spark plug wires go? Well, in this method, we're gonna make it really simple by just taking the wires and moving them on the cap directly from your old distributor cap to your new one. The distributor caps have some identifying features on them, such as the location of the hold down clamp, and you can use that to eyeball where the terminals match up. For example, this is the number one terminal on the old cap, this is the number one terminal on the new cap, right here. So that means I can just start taking off spark plug wires and move them in perfect order all the way around the cap. That's one, that's eight, that's four, and so on, all the way around the cap. And you can double check your work simply by following the spark plug wire down to the cylinder to make sure it's going to the right place. Yeah. <laughs>